Hello. Oh, all right. Rock on. Well, as y'all can see, I am Hey Brother this week. Hey Brother, how about? So that's me. And Gavin messing with me, he uh, is speaking over at the youth house tonight, hit me up about 6 o'clock with, Hey Brother, can you fill in over here for me too? And then he, he let me sweat for about 30 minutes and texted me back to clear that up. But yeah, he... He was messing with me, but it's uh, good to be with y'all tonight. I think it's been a while since I've been up here, so uh, excited to, uh, to share with you tonight. I want to start off by saying, or asking you, as you look back over your life, now don't blurt nothing out, but what's some things you have tried just some things you've tried. Now, again, don't blurt nothing out. Don't tell on yourself. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell a little bit on myself. Well, some things I've done. I've flown on a very small airplane, and I won't ever do it again, but I've tried it. I've tried snow skiing, but I'm better suited to just flop down on an inner tube and slide down the hill. But I've tried it. I've played golf up at Sky Valley on January 1st, New Year's Day, with snow on the ground. And we were the only ones that had a golf cart with no windshield on it. Miserable. But I've tried it. Back in the day, I could get around the lake on skis and, and knee boards and even a little barefooting. But I think nowadays it'd probably yank my arms off before I could ever see the top of the water. But I tried it. Ice skating. Never again. Keisha wants to jump out of an airplane, but not me. But we all know that it's the helmet that will save your life after you fall about 15,000 feet, won't it? What about food? What's some food you've tried? Some food you've tried. Growing up, what I ate consisted mainly of meat, potatoes, and ketchup. I could, I could live off of that. But as I got older, my, my taste changed a little bit, and I ventured out into some Mexican food eventually. I got older, even tried a chitlin or two, fried, fried. I got a chitlin story I'll share with you if y'all remind me before I get down. Uh... But now Keisha and her vegetables, from A to Z, from asparagus to zucchini, she'll eat them all. It don't matter, and it, I don't think it matters how you cook them, she'll eat them. When we first started dating, she didn't really love pizza. She didn't love peanut butter. She didn't love raisins. And she didn't like chicken livers, but she kept saying, I really ought to like them because they look good. But then she got pregnant, had a couple of boys. Now she's okay with pizza with all them nasty vegetables on it. She'll eat peanut butter. And she got us some chicken livers just yesterday. But she still pretty much won't touch a raisin. But she'll eat it. She'll try anything. And now I've ate a lot of vegetables from the alphabet. A young lady in our church, in our congregation, at 20-plus uh, years old, just recently tried mayonnaise and has become quite fond of it. So there's a lot of things that we'll, we'll try. And I'm sure you've got some, too. I could recite some mischievousness that I got into, but I won't to protect the innocent or the rest of the guilty, whatever you want to call it. But the great thing 
about trying something is that if you don't like it, you don't have to do it again. Am I right? The bad foods I've tasted, I don't like them. I don't, well, let me take that back. She fixes them and I'm going to eat. I've got to eat whatever she puts on my plate. Or I've got to go to the sandwich drawer. <laughs> so we don't have to try it again. So what about religion? You know, for years I've thought uh, Christianity was just a, another religion. But as I've done some digging, trying to get information together for what I wanted to speak about tonight, what I've learned is that religion is our effort to get to God. Our effort to reach God, our effort to make things right, with God. For example, Adam and Eve and their fig leaf. That was their effort to cover up their sin to make things right with God. The Tower of Babel, if you know that story, Nimrod headed that up. They wanted to build a tower, and depending on your version and the Bible scholars you talk to, some say they wanted to build a tower to heaven. Some said they wanted to build a tower that would become heaven. But it was their effort to be like God, to make things right with God, to reach God. And God stepped in and wiped that out. How about the golden calf? Moses didn't show up for a while. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to make us something that will be our God, and we're going to worship it. That's religion. That's religion. It's man's efforts to try to reach God. But Christianity is God's attempt to reach man. For God, for man to choose God. God wants us to love him. God wants us to choose him. I know Joey's not here tonight, but Joey's got a shirt that he wears occasionally. It says, my wife rocks. Is that right, Sherry? I'm sure Sherry bought that for him. <laughs> but if Joey wears that shirt because Sherry said you might find a little antifreeze or cyanide in your sweet tea if you don't is joey wearing that shirt because he chose sherry because he loves sherry or because that's on his own effort to keep the poison out of his tea gavin murphy gavin speaking over at the youth house tonight gavin's been married about a not quite a year and a half i think in marriage, he's done quite well. Bentley is uh, well above his pay grade, I think. No, nah, I'm just aggravating. But uh, if Bentley shows up every time you see her with a smile on her face because Gavin won't feed her and Gavin won't do that and he's forcing her to do that, has she really chose Gavin? No. And I say that to say that God... When he instituted the Ten Commandments, he could make every one of us force them at will, never miss a beat, never had a need for a Savior to come and die on a cross. But if, we done, if he'd done that, did we ever choose God? No. It's been said here before that God is a perfect gentleman. He'll never force us to do anything we don't want to. He wants us to choose him. That's what Christianity is. Read a story here to you from the Christian Ministries International. <clears throat> These people had written about a religion versus Christianity. And this is some things they, or part of the article I want to read. They uh, get these... Uh, when they go to college campuses, a lot of times they run into people that's not very supportive of their ministry. 
Why are you Christians always sending missionaries overseas? People have their own culture, their own religion. Why don't you just leave them alone? This is one of the most common statements we hear as we lecture on college and university campuses throughout the United States and around the world. Students and faculty often jeeringly ask us, what is so special about Christianity? Different from every religion in the world? To be sure, this is a very significant question and probably one of the most significant questions that any Christian could ask themselves. What is so special about Jesus Christ? Our family has a close friend named Lou. Lou grew up in the nation of Thailand, and he was a Buddhist for the first 20 years of his life until he met some Christian missionaries who introduced him to Jesus Christ. If you were to ask Lou today, what is so special about Jesus Christ and Christianity different from every other religion in the world, Lou would share with you the following story. When I was a Buddhist, I felt like I was in the middle of a large lake. I was drowning, and I didn't know how to swim. As I struggled to keep my head above water, I looked out towards the shore and saw Buddha walking up to the edge of the lake. I was going under for the third time when suddenly Buddha began shouting out instructions to me, teaching me how to swim. Buddha shouted, kick your legs and paddle your arms. But then Buddha said, Lou, you must make it to shore by yourself. As I desperately struggled to follow the instructions of Buddha, I looked out towards the shore again. But this time I saw Jesus Christ walking towards the edge of the lake. However, Jesus did not stop at the edge of the lake. Jesus dove into the lake. He swam out and rescued me. And once Jesus had brought me safely back to shore, then he taught me how to swim so that I, may, I could go back and rescue others. That's Christianity. God wants us to choose him. Let's look at two religious people in the Bible. Nicodemus. In John chapter 3, verses... 1 through 21. Oh, Lord, I can't read that. I'm to... But y'all remember the story of Nicodemus? He come, one that comes to Jesus by night. So let's read here about him. There was a man, John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Right there in verse 1, we find out a lot about Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a Pharisee. The Bible goes on to say in the second part, ruler of the Jews. No doubt, Nicodemus knows more than all of us can bind about God. But we see in a second, he doesn't know God. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, thee, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say and said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and there hears the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh. And whither it goeth, so it's every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do, speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Again there in verse 10. Jesus calls him a master of Israel. Nicodemus has all the knowledge there is to know about God through his training, through his position. But he doesn't know God. Here to be born again, Jesus is explaining to him, no, 
you're not going to go back into the womb and be born again. But you are going to be a new creation. A new beginning, a whole new life. And in our scripture here, this section, it does not tell us that Nicodemus got saved. But other times in the Bible where we hear about Nicodemus questioning the Pharisees about why they're going to arrest Jesus. Nicodemus being there as they took Jesus' body. So from that evidence, we, we understand that Nicodemus was saved. With all his knowledge, he didn't know God until Jesus came and introduced him to him. Let's look at another religious person, the Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 7, verses 54 through 58. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Now, we're talking about the stoning of Stephen right here. And that first verse there talks about they gnashed on him with their teeth. They go in and biting him. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up and steadfastly, in, steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And that's where we're first introduced to Saul. Saul's persecuting, approving the death of a Christian. Let's read more about Saul. Acts chapter 9. <laughs> At Saul's conversion. And Saul yet breathing out threatening and threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. He's approved the killing. Now he's wanting to go arrest them. What's left? Pretty intense guy. Nowadays we look at somebody like that and we talk about how, how stupid they are. Maybe there's something wrong with them and that kind of stuff. But look on over here in Philippians chapter 3. What we learn about Paul. Verses 3 through 6. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. And here's his pedigree. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, I was blameless. So Paul's no dummy. Paul, a Pharisee, knowing as much about God as Nicodemus, probably more because of his length of time that he studied under Gamaliel. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. If we look at Paul today, what he's out doing, persecuting the church, arresting folks, pretty much wanting to do away with people that don't think like he does, people that don't agree with him. Is he any different than somebody that ordered somebody to fly a plane into the buildings at the World Trade Center? Is he any different than ordering somebody to go set off a, a bomb and kill 13 of our servicemen? Is Paul any different? According to that, and what we see today, you, we could say Paul's a terrorist. But then Paul meets Jesus. Jesus changed his life. 
as I read these stories, one thing that I uh, realized that when Jesus introduces God, when Jesus introduces himself to Nicodemus and Paul, there is no, wait a minute, let me think about this. With what Paul has done to the church, and Jesus meets him on the road to Damascus, you would think the strong-willed and as intense as Paul was and strong-willed in his mind that he would have had doubts, but the Scripture doesn't say that. It said that once Paul met Jesus, he was converted. The only people that seemed to have doubts was the ones that knew Paul beforehand. Here today, in our community, in our nation, wherever, Somebody could lead a, a, a type of lifestyle that is questionable, that is of uh, bad character, and they meet Jesus, and he changes their life, and it seems the one, only ones that doubt are the fellow Christians. Christianity is God trying to reach us. He tries to do that through his son, Jesus. Maybe you've got caught, gotten caught up in just trying. When it comes to your walk in Christ, maybe you're caught up in just trying. You know, there's some things in life that we don't try out. One of them's marriage. You don't try out marriage. You don't take it for a test drive. A marriage license don't expire. When Keisha and I got married, her cousin came up to me at the reception. He said, a lot of people think marriage is a word, but it's a sentence. And he left it at that. You don't try out being a parent. And you certainly don't try out Christianity. Because it's nothing that you do. It's something you receive, something you accept. The Bible says we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So that tells me there's nothing I can do, nothing I can pay, nothing I can offer for God to ever see me perfect again. He had to send his perfect son to pay that debt. So maybe you're caught up in the trying. So instead of trying, you need to start trusting. Trusting that Jesus is who he says he is. Well, how do I trust him? He won't, uh, why won't he fix my bank account? Maybe we should listen when we uh, study his word and it talks about get being a good steward of what he's given us how come you won't fix my marriage have you read the part in the bible about husband and wife's relationship and what he expects you to do that's how you 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 trust jesus it's through his word communicating him in prayer so anyway in closing again i'm always the shortest preacher up here i hope y'all not offended by that but we may say i've tried this church i prayed this prayer i've read this scripture i've gave this amount of money i have uh went on this mission trip i have done everything i know to do so this is kind of the title of my message tonight well maybe the eyes don't have it God has it, and he wants to give it to you through his son, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we bow before you right now. Fathers, we study tonight the differences between some religion and Christianity. Father, it's such a, a message to me of what you would go through just to uh, reach a sinful person like me. Father, as a Christian, I believe that 
in this room tonight, if only one of us had ever committed any sin, you would have still went to that cross just to reconcile that one soul. Father, in Lou's story, he talks about how he was taught to swim so that he can go rescue others. Father, help us share the message of Jesus Christ so we can rescue one more soul from drowning, one more soul from stepping into eternity without the assurance of eternal life with you. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus and that beautiful, precious gift. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all being here. Y'all can go out to the youth building and storm Gavin's stuff out there and rattle him up a little bit. <laughs>